Hello everyone, this is my review of the Benchcrafted Glide Leg Vice, the Benchcrafted Tail Vice, and the Benchcrafted Moxon Vice. So, let's get into it. So firstly, let's have a look at the Leg Vice. Now the leg vice runs the entire height of the workbench and we've got this massive cast iron hand wheel on here and within here I've also got the bench crafted crisscross mechanism which stops the jaws from skewing so if you cramp something in the top without that mechanism it's likely to skew backwards and you're not going to get as much clamping force in there. The crisscross keeps the jaws parallel as they move in and out and prevents any skewing of the jaws through uneven pressure. Now the crisscross is sold separately. I would thoroughly recommend buying it. The other option is to fit a pegboard at the bottom of the vise, but that involves bending down and changing the distance of the peg every single time you want to clamp something with a different thickness in here. Now in terms of the actual grip strength of this, it works pretty incredibly. So you see it runs very freely and then with just a little tweak like that, should just be able to put all of my weight on that bit of walnut and it does not slip whatsoever. So in the top section of this chop, you've got about eight inches of this grippy material that's supplied with it. It's like a rubbery material. It doesn't look too nice, but you only see like three millimeters of it around the outside. So not too fussed about that. But the main advantage with a leg vise such as this is that the vise is flush with the front of the workbench, especially in the case of this Rubo that I've built. So. If you want to clamp something like this and work on the edge, that's just fine. There's enough support of this, you know, that's gonna hold itself in place. You can play along the top there. You could do whatever you wanted. The issue with a lot of workbenches is when it comes to working on a longer bit of material. So if I was to clamp this in the vise and I wanted to plane this top edge, for example, you know, it's all right, but it's a little bit floppy out on this side. And even though I'm wrenching this around quite a lot, the leverage still allows you to move that up and down. So by having the vise flush with the front of the workbench, it means that in conjunction with the sliding dead man, you could get a little bench dog. You could pop that into the sliding dead man. Just loosen this off a bit so I can lower it down. And I'm gonna rest the wood on the sliding dead man here. And this cramps across the front of the workbench. So now that is fully supported here and fully supported here by the vise. And if you're still worried about that movement moving in and out, you could get yourself a hold down clamp or a hold fast or something like that and put that in the sliding dead man instead. So that's as much about the design of the workbench itself as opposed to solely the leg vise, but you cannot deny that the grip strength of it is pretty incredible. Furthermore, the thread in here is extremely well polished. It is all made in America to just, the finish on it is insane, it's brilliant. I haven't oiled this since making it, which was about eight months ago and it still runs incredibly smoothly. There's sawdust and stuff on the thread in here and it just goes, it's absolutely brilliant. Now with these vices, you have two options. You've either got the option of a cast hand wheel, which is what I got here. It's a little bit cheaper. You get a rough finish from it left from the casting and you get some nice acrylic infused beach handles on the side here. So nice and hard wearing, goes with the overall theme of my workbench. But if you fancy something a little bit more blingy, you can also get a machined handle, which is really nicely polished and it comes with some exotic wood looking handles. I think it's called diamond wood. Kind of looks like Coca Bolo. It's probably a substitute because Coca Bolo is quite difficult to get hold of now and a little bit iffy, I suppose. Now in terms of installation, this thing was easy to install. It's just drilling a few holes to certain depths. Uh, you've got to attach a nut to the back of the leg. The most difficult thing is keeping it all aligned, but then that is down to how accurate your marking out is, which if you take your time, it should be pretty good. And in addition to that, the crisscross below, again, very easy. Benchcrafted actually supply you with plans with the hardware and you can also download them from their website as well. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, then maybe just download that, have a look and see if it is something that you would be happy to try and install. The only thing that you would need is an accurate drill press. But if you have a drill stand or something like this that is gonna allow you to do it at 90 degrees, you could get away with it, just be very, very careful. 
Now, what don't I like about this vise? Well, the first thing is very minor. It literally means nothing, but it is the wobble in these handles as you move them in and out. There's about a millimeter play in it, and these screws tend to loosen a little bit over time. I think I have to tighten them down once every week or something like that, it, it's really nothing. You know, this is me trying to find the smallest thing with this that I don't like because everything else is brilliant. So yeah, that little bit of play is a little bit annoying, but I could just chuck a washer in there if I really wanted to get rid of that. I haven't yet, so that just shows how much it really doesn't mean to me. The only other small issue isn't actually with the vise itself, it's with the crisscross mechanism below. And that is when clamping maybe thinner boards, more fragile boards or something like that, they can sometimes get caught in the crisscross mechanism if you clamp them at a weird angle or something like that. If you cramp them up in there, it can pinch between the two things in there and cause some sort of splitting. So when I was making my chopping board, I accidentally caught it in the crisscross mechanism and as a result, I had to make quite big chamfers of it. Again, that's not really down to the hardware itself. That's just down to my carelessness, but it's something that you should be aware of just in case. But overall, this is absolutely brilliant and it is possible to retrofit it into a pre-existing bench already. You don't need to make an entirely new bench just to fit this in. And again, that is all covered in Benchcrafted instructions. Now, the next bit of hardware we're gonna be looking at is the Benchcrafted Moxon vise, which is this here. So this is a portable vise, even though it weighs an absolute ton, but you can bring this to places with you. So basically all this kit consists of is two threaded bars, two hand wheels that run freely on those threaded bars, two washers on the back of that and two nuts on the back as well. So it all comes in a little box and you basically make the jaws yourself. Now as I said this is great for portability and it is very easy to attach to the top of your existing workbench if you wanted. All you need is two clamps, these could be G cramps, these could be F cramps, they could be these quick release clamps but basically what you do is on the back jaw, you make an overhang, you cut a little notch out of it, and that is what you cramp into. So let's get this on the edge of the bench, cramp it down like that, bring this side out, cramp it down like that, and there we go. That is attached to the top of our workbench, nice and securely. Again, no wobble on it whatsoever. Now the great thing about these vices is that they are very, very good for dovetailing because it supports the piece across its entire width. So you'll notice there that the jaw moves independently. It doesn't actually move with the wheels. So it means that you don't have to attach any sort of mechanism to that front drawer. It is literally just two blocks of wood with holes drilled in them. Very, 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 very easy to make. So it goes in like that. With one wheel, you set it to the thickness of the workpiece. And then this one here works as your clamping mechanism. So you can pop it in the middle, clamp it around like that. And there we go. Wrench around a little bit. And that is very much in there. So again, pressure on top it is not going to go anywhere. And again, to aid with the grip in this vise, it is supplied with some crubber material, which is that rubbery stuff that you saw on the leg vise just now. Uh, but instead, I chose to use suede for this because it looks a little bit nicer, but it gives the same grip strength. Now, as I said, this vise is great for dovetailing. So if you were doing boxes, if you were doing very, very small pieces, this would be absolutely brilliant. The limitations of this vise is when it comes to doing edge work, for example. So if I was to take this out and I wanted to plane the edge of it flat, it's not going to fit between the two hand wheels on there, or sorry, the two threads. So it means that you're gonna be working right up here. Now to counteract that, obviously you could make different jaws and you could span these like across the entire width of your workbench if you wanted, but then it makes the vise heavy. It makes it difficult to get onto the top of the bench and cramped in place. And if you need to go beyond that length, then you, know, you, you get the point. It's a little bit of a nightmare. Also, another limitation with this is if you're working on very, very wide and heavy components, such as this big old two inch slab of Ovan coal you've got here, it does provide a little bit of vibration in there as well because with something with this weight and length on it, it provides quite a lot of leverage on the vise and these cramps aren't always able to hold it in place. So you'll get a little bit of vibration at the top here if you try and use this with too heavy material. So really, I would only recommend the Moxon vise to people doing small bits of furniture maybe or primarily boxes is where this is going to be really handy dovetail boxes you'll absolutely love this vice for now the third bit of hardware we're going to be looking at is the bench crafted tail vice now the style of this is actually a wagon vice because the dog block is entirely inset within the workbench itself whereas other tail vices you may have seen there's kind of like an l-shaped block and that entire section 
moves in and out. Now the trouble with an L-shaped block like that is that over time, because there's so much weight on it, it can start slackening and the mechanism gets a little bit loose. Perhaps the wood can move or something like that. Basically, it's more prone to damage compared to something like this. Now what a tail vise excels in is clamping wood flat to the top of your workbench. So you've got two dogs on there, it goes between that and the dog block simply clamps it in place. And again, that is not going anywhere. But you can also get a little bit of extra use out of the tail vise because this little section here, you can wind the wagon right back, pop that in there, lock it down, and that is extremely stable in there again. So you, that'd be great for sawing tenons or something like that, for example. You could also line the inside of that dog block with a bit of leather or suede, as I did with the previous vices, but this one, it's, yeah, it's gonna slip up and down a little bit, but that is like my entire body weight that takes that to move it down. And I haven't really cramped around that wheel very much at all. Now, in terms of installation, challenging <laughs> to say the least. Now, I had to change the design a little bit compared to the instructions that they supplied because of the way I designed this workbench with this tenon going through here. So originally in the bench crafting instructions, it says to place this wagon in the second laminate of the workbench. But if I did so, and this whole section was hollow here, it would mean that as this dog block is wound in like that, and then cramped against a bit of material or cramped against this section here, it's now putting pressure on this end cap here, and it's trying to pull it out via this hand wheel. So that's why you've got a dovetail section here, because it is trying to reduce that from being pulled away. And if this section was hollow there, it would mean that this laminate that I've got the front here, it's an end grain joint here. It's likely to tear that away because it's fixed at the dovetails here, but it's obviously not gonna be as strong there. So by shifting it back into the third laminate means that it's supported by the entire length of this bit of timber here and the entire length of this bit of timber here. It shouldn't go anywhere, but in doing so, it made the installation quite difficult. So um, let's have a look underneath and you can kind of see what's going on with it. So with this vise, you get two long tracks in here, which are three quarters of an inch square, and it has a little track in there as well. So this plate slides into the track and then you've got a little block on top of that, which you have to bolt to the bottom through these Allen key bolts here. And with that block on top, you have the option to orientate it in a left or right hand configuration. So depending on which side you want the tail vise on the workbench, you can simply swap that block around and it will suit the other side of the workbench. The orientation I've got for this workbench is for a right hander. Now the bench crafted instructions state that installing this vise is as simple as removing as much material as needed in order to install the vise. It sounds quite careless and it is fundamentally, that's what it is, but you know, removing this much material from the underside of your workbench is a pretty stressful task and you need to be very, very sure of your marking out. So installing this vise is not for the faint hearted and the instructions to do it are pretty comprehensive as well. I would recommend having a look at those before even purchasing the vise to see if you're happy with doing it. But in reality, it's not too bad. I mean, if you remove too much material, you could just bodge it and patch it up. I think through here, I had a little bit of veneer that I've put in there just to bring that bar in a little bit more to help snug it up on this dog block a little bit. You're never gonna see it, so it doesn't really matter. If you do get this vise, just really make sure that you measure your workbench around it, because as you can see here, the vise actually goes into the legs. I didn't account for as much overhang as I should have on this end of the workbench, so I kind of had to notch it out a little bit in order to fit these bars under there. Now there is another screw head under that leg, but I didn't actually screw it in place in case I need to take these out at some point in the future. So these are only held in with three screws on each side. The fourth one hidden under that section is not screwed in because obviously I won't be able to take the bars out otherwise. And as you can see here, this little semicircle you see here is the first dog that goes to the top of the workbench. And the reason it's like that is because I simply just didn't measure properly. This notch here is cut out to accept this plate to slide above it. But by the time you get this little sliding dog block in there, it stops against that bit anyway, so you don't need that clearance there as it is. It was in the Benchcraft instructions, I put it in there, but as you can see, it doesn't really matter. If it goes terribly wrong, hardly anyone's gonna see it unless you do a video like I'm doing now and showing you all of this torn up end grain and that stupid dog block, but anyway, it's lessons learned. So once you've got that whole mechanism fitted, the only thing you've got to do is screw the dog block in place, which is what these two screws here hold. 
So those are attached straight into that bit of wood there and that moves with the wagon underneath the workbench and as you can see the dog block you obviously need to align with this cutout here and it's machined out square in case you want to use square dogs as opposed to using round dogs like I've done here. Now my critiques about this vise, again really not a lot whatsoever. Same as the leg vise, there's a little bit of play in that handle which could easily be removed. It's just me being picky, trying to look for problems with it. The only other issue with this that can sometimes be, it's not a problem, but it's just not very nice, is that sometimes there's a little bit of vibration in the dog block itself. I'll show you that for example. So if I bring it all the way in and lock it in place, when I loosen this and bring it around really quickly, the vibration in the thread starts causing it to jump up and down. After that vibration ends, I can wind it out slowly and it's okay, but if I speed up, it can sometimes catch in there. And I'm not entirely sure what causes this, whether it's slop in the adjustments that I made with the tracks underneath, or if it's the actual threaded bar itself, because if I move this handle, it can move about three millimeters or an eighth of an inch up the other end here. So I can't help but think it is that small amount of movement that is causing the vibration to happen, in which case it's caused by the tolerances around the block around this section somewhere. But if I wanted to get rid of that, I could attach a little nylon bracket, for example, which would support that thread from underneath. It would allow it to run on top of it and stop it from being able to move side to side and up and down and things like that. It would just keep it in the place it's intended, but the nylon obviously wouldn't get damaged over time because it's a pretty hard wearing material but overall the vice works absolutely brilliant again you have the option of either cast handles on here with beach handles or you've got the polished handles the nice machined ones with the exotic wood-esque handles in there as well so there you go guys that is my review of the bench crafted hardware so in short buy it. If you are building a new workbench such as a Rubo in the style of the one I've got here or even a shaker workbench that leg vise if you fit that into it, it it's just an absolute dream they are brilliant. Furthermore if you can get a tail vise into it as well again invaluable. <laughs> I absolutely love them. That The setup that I've got here combined I can clamp wood in all three orientations whether that's upright, longwise or flat on the workbench with minimal effort. Absolutely brilliant combination. If you're wanting to retrofit this hardware onto an existing workbench you can do it with the tail vise. It's a lot of hacking out material but it can be done. It might not look pretty at the end of it but functionality is more important I suppose. Again, the leg vice, you could do that. You just need to make sure that you pack out the leg to make sure that the leg is flush with the top of the workbench. But if you can't do any of that, then look into the Moxham vice. And if you're obviously a box maker as well, then something like this is going to be really, really good for dovetailing. But you still have those limitations as I showed you earlier. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about building workbenches, the book here by Chris Schwarz, Workbenches from Design and Theory to Construction and Use, is what I used to design this entire workbench and is what dictated my choice with a leg vise and a wagon vise at the end there. So much information in such a thin book. It makes you look at all workbenches in a completely different way. I'll put a link to it in the description. If you buy it through the link, I'll get a little bit of a cut from it so it doesn't all go to the Amazon behemoth. Yeah, that would help me out a lot. And if you want to know any more information on any of the other books I've got up here, I did a video on that as well. So the link is in the top corner for that now. Um, yeah, hope you found the video useful and I will see you next time.